If you didn't perform well in your trial exam, don't worry. I've got a plan that will help you turn things around before the final exam. I'll walk you through the steps that help students improve their marks significantly. Here are the steps I'll cover. Step 1, Step 2, Step 3, Step 4, and Step 5. I'll explain each step in details so you can understand how to apply them. Step 1. Evaluate the topic. The first thing that you need to do is evaluate each topic to see which ones you strong in and which ones you need more work. To do this, list all the topics and rank them. You can use a scale of 1 to 10 or a percentage. For example, if you think you are about to get a 10%, 20% or 60% confident in a topic like solving for X, write that down. After you've ranked all the topics, the next step is to test yourself on each one. I recommend using past papers for this. Use the more challenging May, June paper as they tend to be trickier. Make sure to write the paper under exam condition, no notes or textbook, and then mark yourself using the memo. Once you've graded yourself, you have a clear idea of how you did overall, but more importantly, you have a percentage for, for each topic. Knowing exactly where you stand will be a key for step two. Step two, the color method. Now that you know your score for each section, we're going to apply the color method, one of my favorite techniques. I have a full video on this, which I'll link in the description, but here's a quick summary. The color method groups topics into three categories. Red, for the topics that you scored the lowest in. Orange, for topics that you need some improvement but ain't as bad. Green, for topics that you are confident in. It's also important to start with the topics that carry most marks. Some students think that focusing on high mark topic is harder, but that's not true. Around 80% of the questions in the sections are basics and only 20% are more difficult. So mastering the basics in high mark topics is crucial. If you only focus on low mark topics like finance and probability, which may only be worth about 30 marks combined, you risk scoring below 50%. The key is to prioritize. Step three, mastering the topics with my courses. Once you've grouped your topics using the color method, the next step is mastering them. This is where my courses come in. My courses are designed to help you master the basics by focusing on past paper questions that often repeat in exam. I also cross-reference multiple textbooks and study guide, making sure each topic is covered thoroughly. And don't worry about missing foundational knowledge from grade 10 or 11. I included that in the courses to ensure you are fully prepared. Every video lesson in the course is interactive, meaning you can get a practice immediately after watching. This boosts your confidence and helps you figure out what you understand right away. The course is built for students at any level, so even if you're starting from scratch, you'll get the guidance you need. Step four, creating your study plan. Now that you have identified your weak areas, and found the right tools, it's time to create a study plan. I offer 10 courses that cover all key topics, each with specific number of hours based on the length of the topic and the depth of explanation needed. Here's how you can build your plan. Number one, prioritize topics. Start with the red topics that have most marks. For example, if you are weak in both functions and probability, because function carries more marks, you start there. Number two, set study hour. Next to each topic, write down how many hours you need to study it. Those hours are based on the course's length I've developed, so they reflect the time it takes to fully understand and master a topic. Number three, calculate study days. Figure out how many days you will have left until a week before your final exam. You will need to finish your prep a week earlier to allow time to revise and consultation. To calculate the number of days, you can use this formula. 
Here's how to apply it. Number one, start date. The day you want to start studying, let's assume you want to start studying on the 18th of September. Number two, end date. The day before your exam, for example, let's take the 27th. This is one week before paper one. Then using ChatGPT, you're going to type the following. How many days between 18th of September 2024 till 27th of October 2024? The result will be 39 days. In my case, obviously in your case, it's going to be different. This is going to be the number of days that you're going to be studying between the day that you want to study and the week before your exam. So now we need to calculate the hours per day, which is going to be the total hours. Total hours is going to be the total hours from the course. So the one that I've highlighted in yellow. Then you're going to take what? You're going to need your total days, which is going to be what? Which is going to be? the number of days that you calculated before this right then what you're going to do is that you're going to use the formula that you see on the screen and now to calculate the total hours that you need per day is going to be 59 which is going to be your total hours right of the entire course right divided by the total days then that's going to give you 1.44 hours per day that's what we're going to get in our example right so now since you know the fact that you have calculated what the total hours per day now what we're going to do is the following right is that we're going to calculate days per topics so since now we have the amount of hours that you need to spend a day to study maths from the time that you're starting till the week before the exam now you need to calculate how much time you need to spend per topic and that's what we're going to calculate calculating the days per topic right so we're going to use the formula that you're going to see on screen and when we apply it, basically, you're going to take what? You're going to take, for example, you're going to take functions from the table. It's going to be what? We see the fact that the total hours for function is 9.5. So you're going to say 9.5 divided by the number of what? Of hours per day, which is in our case is 1.44. And we see the fact that the total hours, the total days that we need to spend for functions will be what? 6.6, .6, which when you round it off is seven days. So that's how you would calculate the number of days that you need to spend per topic right now this is basically the final breakdown of the, how many days you need to spend per topic and obviously with your case it's going to be different because of your number of days will be different and also the number of total hours will be different depending on the courses that you're struggling with or the ones that you want to focus on hope that makes sense now you can allocate those days across the 39 days which is going to be the time period that you need to study right and keep track of each topic according to the color method step five tracking your progress finally let's talk about tracking your progress after you finish studying each topic give yourself an extra day or a few hours to test yourself with two or three past paper questions under exam condition and just to make it easier so that you have like, you know whether your progress is going up or down. When you test yourself, do not test yourself on the entire paper, but test yourself on that specific topic, right? So that way you can see whether you're improving or not. This step is crucial because it helps you see if you're improving, if you're still struggling, or if you still need more time to ask for extra help. Once you're confident with the topic, you can move on to the next step, which is the next step is basically moving to the next topic. Final week before the exam. The reason we finish the study plan a week before the exam is to give time to consult with your teacher. This week isn't for learning new topics. It's for polishing up and making sure you are 100% ready for the final. Real student success. Before we wrap up, I want to show you, I want to show you how those steps help one of my students. We followed those five steps and created a study timetable studying what functions after using my course and practicing what past paper, the student improved from a score of 28% to 68, as you can see on the screen. Here's another student's testimonial. They scored a 55 in term one, 75% in term two, 88% in term three, which is the SBA mark. Although we haven't yet received the final term three results, I'm confident the students did well. Those results makes me so proud and reminds me that the hard work I've put into the courses over the past two years have been worth it.
Now it's your turn to make this method work for you. Check out the link in the description to explore the free topics and see how my courses can help you improve your marks in term four or in the final exam. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one. Bye.